Welcome back. We are here looking at the S&P 500, the Dow Jones, and the Nasdaq. And we'll start off by looking at the S&P 500. And we're going to recap what basically happened last week. So on Monday, we were very close to this 20 exponential moving average. And we, we didn't reach it. We, uh, we bounced and uh, we head up to... Uh, to uh, 3,265 before technically collapsing on Thursday. And this was due to the horrendous GDP numbers that were uh, pronounced for the second quarter for the U.S. Um, economy. And the U.S. economy fell by nearly 32.9%, uh, uh, so 33% um, in the second quarter which is historic. It has never, ever uh, dropped that much ever uh, in, uh, since they started uh, calculating, uh, measuring GDP in the United States. Uh, however, this was not a very significant fall when comparing uh, that significant data. Um, on Friday, we had this bounce. And the reason why we had this bounce is because the tech companies had massive, massive gains in the in their in in the in basically in this crisis. So we can see, for example, Apple went up by ten percent one day. Apple, uh, Facebook as well went up with uh, with eight percent. Well, there were a few of these tech companies that were not doing as well. For example, uh, Google and Alphabet were not doing as well. They were, uh, Google went down by, by 3% and so on. But Apple was leading the way. It had record um, earnings. The same goes for Facebook um, and so on. The tech companies are doing really very well. Uh, while other companies, were, for example, uh, airlines and uh, uh, cruise lines and, uh, um, and retails and so on are not doing very well. However, we had this historic downturn in the GDP, US GDP, and this is what happened. Technically, nothing. Nothing has really happened in the selling side. We can, we can go all the way back to this candle here. This is the only major fall in the S&P 500 the last, yeah, well, three, four months. Since, uh, since uh, March, we have basically been in an upward trajectory. And if a 33% fall, a pronouncement of 33% fall in the US GDP can't get this market to go down, I'm pretty sure there's nothing that's going to make this market go down. This is basically the Fed running this market. And as long as the Fed has um, its current policies of bailing everybody out, uh, keeping interest rate low, and basically adding new liquidity to this market, this market is just going to go higher. But in the last video I made, I had a scenario that uh, we probably won't go higher straight away. There's not a lot of obstacles in order to go higher. We have this gap here, and then we have the highs. But I could imagine this market trading sideways for for a few weeks before we go higher. That may happen. However, this candle here, that green candle there, that is basically buyers pressure, pressuring the price up. And this basically indicates that we most likely will go higher from here. We will fill this gap and we'll also uh, test uh, all-time highs of um, 3,397. So if we look at the technical indicators, we can see that the RSI is basically in the middle. It's not oversold, not overbought. Uh, we are technically quite high. Uh, 70 is basically the mark uh, um, whether or not you're oversold no, overbought, and we are at 67 at the moment. So, but this is a, an up your upwards trajectory, and and uh, the same goes for the MACD. We are basically uh, indicating that we're going higher. The Bollinger Band basically could also go higher from here. 
uh, if I go like this, it could go a little bit higher. Uh, it doesn't seem like, uh, doesn't indicate that we'll go, we're going lower, at least not on Monday or on Tuesday. And the same goes for the stochastic that was was falling due to the due to the pronouncement of the GDP numbers, but bounced uh, due to the um, earnings of the tech companies. So S and P five hundred, we most likely will go and fill this gap. We will test the all time highs, and then we'll continue onwards. Uh, this market is starting to look very similar to the Nasdaq, where we are trading in a, uh, trading in a, in a, in a, um, sorry, lost my words there. Trading within these boundaries here. So uh, it may well be that we are at the, at the bottom of these boundaries and then we'll go up. It may also well be that we'll trade sideways and uh, yes, at the moment, I'm just going to wait for this market to drop a little bit and then I'll buy. That has been my tactics um, or, uh, since March. Um, I did not go long here. I expected the market to go much uh, lower. Uh, but I technically just been buying the dips. So every time this market falls significantly, I buy. And that is, has been working quite well. There has been one significant uh, red candlestick, which was all the way back in June. And yeah, this is probably a market that will go higher. Uh, I can mention several reasons why this market should not go higher. But the reality is the Fed is basically driving this market. And as long as the Fed is doing its job, and then and this market will continue upwards. Now, if you look at the Dow Jones, it's not the same story here. And uh, the Dow Jones has been trading sideways for uh, quite a long time. We have a highs here of uh, 27,594, 27, and we have a low here of uh, 25,034. So the Dow Jones has been trading at the moment is right in the middle. This is a horrible place to uh, to um, to um, to uh, start trading this um, this index. However, we have as in the S and P five hundred a really really bullish candlestick here. So it would not surprise me if we go and test these highs, but the Dow Jones has been trading sideways. We've been going up, down, up, and so on. This has not been a market that has been on the same course as, for example, the, uh, for example, the, uh, the Nasdaq uh, has been. So it has been interesting. If we go and uh, get close to uh, twenty-seven thousand, uh, this level here, I will consider um, selling. And we get closer to this uh, twenty five thousand. I would consider buying. That is my strategy for the Dow Jones. If we look at the uh, technical indicators, um, the RSI is right in the middle. Nothing special here. Uh, MACD is indicating that we are going uh, downwards, or or it's quite quite bearish. Uh, Bullinger Bound, we're right in the middle, but we still have this very bullish candlestick from Friday. Um, and the stochastic is at the bottom. So if I were to, to estimate, I would say that we would continue higher from here. And the reason being is that we have a very bullish candlestick here. We have the stochastic that shows and indicates that we are going upwards. And also, uh, the Bollinger Bands also indicates that we are most likely going uh, upwards from here. So, yes, my best guess is that the Dow Jones will uh, go and retest this twenty, this level of twenty-seven thousand five hundred, uh, five hundred or six hundred. Um, in the other scenario, it 
the bottom here of this market is 25,000. So if we look at the uh, NASDAQ, so if we look at the NASDAQ, we can see that this is com a completely different index compared to the S&P 500 and the, and the Dow Jones. This uh, index is heavily um, uh, affected by the big companies like Apple and Amazon and Netflix and, and so on. They, are, they own a, a big portion of, of this index and therefore um, if, they, if their stock grows then this index grows and these tech companies have been doing extremely well in the coronavirus uh, period. So the Nasdaq has been trading in the within within this channel for quite a long time now, and it doesn't look like it is going to break this channel anytime soon. So we tested the support level of this channel here. We didn't, didn't even look at the moving averages. But this, uh, because these channels have been uh, very accurate for a very long time now, it has just been bouncing up and down in an upward uh, trajectory. Um, so we hit the lows at on uh, on Monday of um, of ten thousand three hundred, and since then we have just shot up into the air. At the moment, we are going to probably retest these highs of, of 11,000 um, it's going to be really interesting if we basically break 11,000 then we'll go uh, 5,000 points not, not 5,000 500 points higher and uh, after that we'll go to 12,000 um, it will happen eventually um, um, most of these companies that are driving this stock uh, had an extremely good uh, earnings, for example, Apple and uh, Facebook and Amazon and so on, and and um, as long as that is the case, as this uh, as people are pumping money into the stocks, then this index will go higher. Um, this is definitely not an index um, you should short at the moment, uh, because as long as the Fed is providing liquidity um, and interest rates are low and they will bail out anybody that will get into prob problems, then this market will go higher. Yes, I can make a, um, a several um, several uh, points that we are in a massive bubble, but that's how this market has been behaving for uh, a long time now. We can go all the way back to, if we go back to weeks, we can go back to um, to um, all the way back to 2008 and also in the 2000s. This market has seen a few drops. For example, in 2000, we dropped, yeah, um, 30 30 percent or something like that in the, in this uh, this index. But since then, we just continue upwards. We had had we have had a few bumps on the way. Um, last time this index really tanked was back in 2000 when we had a dot-com bubble that index basically tanked back then and since then we have basically just been on a really healthy um, healthy growth and uh, if we just compare what happened here to other periods in the in the Nasdaq this is not a significant it's a significant event. Um, if you look at the dot-com bubble, that was a significant event for the Nasdaq. It lost more than half of its value. Um, the same goes for the Great Recession. Uh, we uh, the Nasdaq lost, yeah, around thirty, a little bit of thirty-five percent of its value. And uh, compare it to this period, well. Technically, it didn't it didn't lose a lot of its value compared to to other periods, and therefore, 
the Nasdaq will just continue. We'll see similar bumps like this, probably in the in the near future. But but um, the best strategy for the Nasdaq is just to buy in the dips. Every single time this happens, buy, and then you continue on. And every next time it happens, buy more, and so on. It is that is technically the easiest th trade you can basically make, and the Nasdaq is one of the easiest indexes to to um, to trade so if you look at the at the, um, at the technical indicators we basically have the MACD is signaling that we're going to cross the signal line again indicating that we'll go higher from here RSI is an upward trajectory um, the Bollinger Band doesn't look very promising However, the uh, stochastic indicates that we will go further from here, further up from here. And this bullish candlestick here, I'm pretty sure that will basically uh, get us above 11,000. If it doesn't happen this week, it will happen next week. We are going higher from here. So I hope you find this uh, analysis helpful. You're welcome to support, uh, support our channel by subscribing and hitting the bell button and sharing. So good luck and thank you very much.